coming on to the esophageal motility disorder this is a very important topic and this year we have received a very difficult question in the neat pg so this is very important topic for neat pg now what is the most common type of esophageal motility disorder most common type okay what is the most common hypermotility disorder what is the most painful of all of them what is the investigation of choice for motility disorders i'll explain so the most common type of esophageal motility disorder is achalasia cardia okay question important but in achalasia cardia there is hypomotility of esophagus so what is the most common hypermotility disorder it is nutcracker esophagus nutcracker esophagus this nutcracker esophagus is also painful so this is most painful motility disorder nutcracker esophagus the investigation of choice for all the esophageal motility disorders is manometry manometry okay or the pressure tracings you can say okay we measure the pressure of the esophagus the lower esophageal sphincter and this is how we diagnose the motility disorders okay now this is the question which was there in the neat pg 2020 on esophageal manometry there was abnormal spastic contraction in esophagus okay abnormal spastic contraction in esophagus which was more than 450 mm mercury cm in the body okay which is suggestive of what among the all so this is actually a super speciality question the answer to this question is type 3 achalasia but it is based on this classification the chicago classification of esophageal motility okay so generally the neat pg and aims people they repeat their topics so i think that there will be a question on this topic again so again we'll have to see these types of achalasia is on the basis of which classification chicago classification okay what is this type 1 achalasia type 2 achalasia type 3 achalasia based on chicago classification you just see here i will explain you how to remember uh, in achalasia cardia okay sorry okay hmm there is increased pressure in les okay and there is failure of relaxation of les this leads to a baseline pressurization in the esophagus okay so there is a baseline pressurization in esophagus okay so and the irp in achalasia cardia is more than 15 mm mercury this irp is integrated relaxation pressure okay so this irp is more than 15 mm in all three types of achalasia i will suggest you to remember this thing the type 1 achalasia is classic achalasia type 2 achalasia is esoph achalasia with esophageal compression and type 3 achalasia is spastic achalasia okay and achalasia all the three achalasias they are characterized by um, 
IRP of more than 15 millimeter of mercury. Generally, what we read about eclasia belongs only to the classical type of eclasia. Okay, so what we read generally regarding eclasia is that there is a pressurization in the esophagus, there is presence of premature contractions, failed peristalsis. So, this type 1 eclasia is classic type of eclasia, this type 2 eclasia is eclasia with compression or pan esophageal pressurization and this type 3 eclasia is spastic eclasia. Okay. So, we, as we can see here, the type 3 eclasia, there is presence of spastic contractions with DCI of more than 450 millimeter of mercury. Okay. Now, this type 1 eclasia is classical eclasia. This type 2 eclasia is eclasia with pan esophageal pressurization. This means that there is a lot of pressure inside the esophagus throughout the length of esophagus. Okay? And in this type 3 eclasia is spastic eclasia. Eclasia. And there is the abnormal spastic contraction which is more than 450 in type 3 type of eclasia. Now, this Jack Hammer esophagus may there is a distal contractile integral of more than or this abnormal spastic contraction of more than 8000 mm Hg s centimeter. Okay. So, this is regarding these three topics regarding this question. Okay. So, this Jack Hammer esophagus can be asked next. So, at least two swallows with a DCI of more than 8000. Coming on to the achalasia, this achalasia is failure to relaxation, okay, failure of LES, lower esophageal sphincter to relax, which leads to achalasia cardia, okay. So, why there is failure of LES to relax because of the loss of inhibitory neurons, okay? Because of loss of inhibitory neurons. So, because there is loss of inhibitory neurons, so there is only contraction of the lower esophageal sphincter, okay? Now, I will explain you what happens in achalasia cardia as we can see here uh, this is stomach this is lower esophageal sphincter which is in contractic phase okay so what we can expect in manometry that there is increased pressure of LES increased pressure of LES, there is absence of, absence of LES relaxation, and whenever there is contraction, so they, in esophagus there is increased pressure, but gradually esophagus will lose its peristalsis okay so there is absence of peristalsis or a peristalsis in esophagus in esophagus there will be a peristalsis or absence of peristalsis increased intraesophageal pressure which is measured as IRP of more than 15, okay, and there is ineffective contractions. Uh, 
okay so these findings we will expect on manometry now how the patient will experience the symptoms in ecclesia cardia whenever a patient is taking some liquids the liquids or the solids they are there in the esophagus okay they are not passing into the stomach gradually there will be regurgitation okay so the first or the most important symptom will be dysphagia this dysphagia is the most important symptom and the most common symptom and this dysphagia is more common to liquids followed by solids okay and because patient is not able to take food properly it is associated with weight loss and due to this regurgitation there is presence of aspiration pneumonitis or lung abscess which is the most important complication